And if you do that, your dystonia will simply disappear because you have no association. All the, all the patterns that you thought before are connected to playing the piano. Those sensations mm -hmm. will disappear. And new patterns in your brain don't have fear, don't have trauma, don't have frustration, don't have hopelessness, don't have depression. All of that, that creates dystonia. Mm -hmm. So they're clear. You're basically sort of born again. You kind of like reset your computer. <laughs> and that helped me personally to recover. I never went to doctors except for the test twice. I never took any medication. That's what I'm trying to say. Weak, weak hand. I found that um, weak hand was good for me. Like imagine that you got six very badly high fever and you just recovered remember how your body is weak and then you come to the piano and it actually feels a bit different because your hand is weak so give me that weak hand that does not produce any sound that's very important to find for you i would not even advise you to advance anywhere else until you find it because it's simple as this if you don't have that sensation in your hand even if you make correct, you know, rolls and swings with your wrist or you avoid stretching your hand, even if you imagine the sound, even if you play with arm weight, this will be like a brick wall between mm -hmm. your intention and the piano. It's like you will have so much, but here, done. And ultimately, it will bring more pain and injury. This is the reason why I start my entire book with that simple lesson, relax hands. And if I could, I would start every single lesson after that with the same lesson. <laughs> I put it inside and I, I would conclude with that. <laughs> now, how do we play with that sensation? <laughs> um, okay, so the movement of a wrist, the swings and the rolls will create the momentum. If you do everything correctly, you see each new movement will create a passive movement. So you basically play with some active movement and some passive movement. But if you don't make any clear pattern in your mind what exactly you're doing, you constantly play on active movement. It's almost like you're playing on constant exhalation or inhalation, okay? So there's rolls and swings that will that they will really create a sense of breathing and momentum in your hands. <laughs> Now, how do you create the sound? You create the sound through fingertips and sound imagination. Every time we conceive idea in, your, in our mind through writing, we know it appears on a piece of paper. The same here. I imagine the sound in a certain quality of dynamics or harmony, or even the quality of sound itself, very important. That affects sensation in my muscles, fingertips, that brings the desired sound to the piano, but you see the difference is when I play, I play only with the fingertip. It's the only part that is working in that moment is here. Mm -hmm. Versus compulsive tension in the whole body, we're trying to play soft. Our whole body is like this in agony. So the idea is that our whole body is completely feeling effortless and sort of like, again, empty and weak, but we only activate the exact part of our body that is responsible for, you know, extracting the sound from the piano. <laughs> the efficiency of that. If we want to play <clears throat> with more, if we want to play louder, if we want to play faster, we're doing it through internal singing and through the arm weight, believe it or not, that we get through our feet, through our entire body. So this is how we play the piano, not with the compulsive tension in the whole body. And that's basically what I'm trying to teach. Mm -hmm.